an undergrad student from Tsinghua University. And this work is done uh, during my internship at Carnegie Mellon HCII with uh, the UBCOM group and with my co-authors, Julian and Annie and Day. And so I'm glad to be here today to present our work, Serendipity, a finger gesture using a uh, recognizing system using the uh, off-the-shelf smartwatch. Uh, so interacting with uh, wearable devices are still very frustrating today due to this uh, relatively small screen size and also the fat, uh, the fat finger problem. So researchers have been working on trying to expand the interaction space uh, be beyond the limited screen size and the traditional touch interaction. So for example, in the figures, uh, with, uh, so Chris Harrison et al, they uh, tried to uh, use a magnetic sensor and uh, so, so that users can perform t uh, those touch gestures above the touch screen instead of uh, touching, actually touching on the screen. And also, so, uh, so uh, researchers has used uh, other sensors like uh, distance sensors so they can send some uh, twist, uh, twist gestures on the watch uh, instead of uh, touching on the screen. And I believe that uh, in the first talk in our session, uh, Shimon gave us uh, a very uh, pervasive understanding of this uh, work on how people expand the interaction space. And also previous uh, always available interfaces have targeted five fine green gestures using specialized sensors. And this increases the cost and decreases the wearability of using them for detecting fine green gestures. And these advantages uh, most uh, motivate us to use a approach that uh, ready available and easy to install. So motion sensors such as the accelerometer has been uh, researched in previous work and they, the researchers use them to uh, recognize noticeable gestures and gross hand motions such as uh, the gestures shown in the figure. And these gestures are very obtrusive and cannot be per, uh, performed without uh, drawing attention to oneself. So in our work, we leverage motion sensors that are readily available on the smartwatch, for example, the accelerometer and gyroscope, to sense fine green gestures. Uh, we perceive that the, the muscle activity differs when performing these finger gestures, and uh, uh, causing different type of vibration and motions on the wrist that could be captured by our uh, motion sensors on the smartwatch. So this video shows the gestures we are trying to recognize. Oh, sorry. Okay. So the first one, pinch, and tap finger, rub fingers, uh, squeeze, and wave fingers. So uh, we used an off-the-shelf uh, Samsung gear watch and to rec recognize these five gestures. Uh, we target this gesture because we want to support really short and uh, short and easy interactions on the smartwatch. Uh, so this gesture should be uh, performed really quick and easy to perform with symbolic meaning that can be mapped to certain functions to control our UI on the smartwatch. For example, the tap finger can be uh, mapped to clicking a button and the rub fingers could be mapped to scrolling a page. Also, fine green gestures uh, requires the, the least motion and to perform these gestures so that they will cost really a little physical or mental effort to the users. So in a pilot study, we, we recorded data from all the motion sensors available through Android API, uh, the accelerometer, gyroscope, gravity, and rotation sensors. So we continuously collect data for a length of 10 seconds for each gesture with a sampling rate of 50 hertz. And we use the one second sliding window to perform statistic and FFT feature extraction. Uh, we did not observe any distinct pattern from, this, uh, from the rotation sensor and the gravity sensor which are on the second row, uh, second row of the, the figure. And, but we did observe them from the accelerometer and the gyroscope. So in the final design of our system, we use the uh, data correctly from the three sensors in the first row of, of this figure. Uh, so next, I will introduce how our system would uh, avoid false positives and uh, classify our gestures. So the first step uh, is pre-processing. 
we collect the row sensor data for the three axes, the X, Y, Z of uh, the three sensors, and then we to compare it for different orientations, uh, which I will introduce in a few slides later, and we calculate the magnitude of the combined sensors. For example, the uh, the x uh, the square root of x square plus y square. So we uh, so we refer to it as x y. And similarly, we do this for y z, x z, and x y z. So altogether, we collected seven statistic features from the one second window. And then we perform a FFT transform, uh, fast Fourier transformation uh, transform on the uh, on the window and produce 25 power bands, and then we keep the lower 10 bands because this band rate should be sufficient enough to cover the frequency feature of our gestures. And so, for more details of the pre-processing uh, pre process, uh, please refer to our paper. So uh, then we try to reduce the number of false positives without requiring an activation gesture. So we implemented an algorithm uh, based on dynamic term warping and k nearest neighbor. So to di distinguish the noise from the gesture, we calculate the DTW distance and then select the nearest sample as the candidate gesture. So if the distance is within a threshold, uh, we would infer that a gesture is performed and then we will use our classifiers to uh, classify this gesture. And otherwise, if the distance is beyond the th threshold, we will define that this is a noise, so the, uh, the classifier will not react to this uh, data. So then uh, we use a su supervised machine learning approach to recognize the gestures. We test performance across a few basic classifiers, for example, the support vector machine and the naive base, and also uh, logistic regression. Overall, the SVM, uh, the, the SVM achieved the best result across uh, all users in our pilot study. And during the real world usage, uh, we will, our system can try all the classifiers and then automatically select the best classifier for and the features for each uh, user. So we conduct a 10 participant lab study for uh, to to uh, to evaluate the effectiveness of our serendipity system. So participants finish a two session uh, data collection study on separate days, and we did not require the position of the device to be exactly the same on these two session and across all the participants. Also. The tightness of the band is not uh, was adjusted according to their own preference, so that this would mimic the real world use of the smartwatches. And in this study, the participants perform the gesture in different orientations. That uh, we try to capture variation of these gestures as much as possible. So we choose these uh, three orientations that exemplify three common use cases, uh, as shown in the figure. Uh, also, we collected two more uh, extra data, two-minute two extra data for uh, false positive detection on both uh, sessions. So in this two minutes, uh, the participants would, perf uh, would wearing their watch while they are typing on their laptop or talking to other people as long as they not uh, perform the gestures. So then we use this data for our false positive detection. And the result is shown here. As this graph shows that uh, the performance across our 10 participants, uh, the, so we use the F1 score for measurement, and the mean F1 score across all the particip participants is 87%. We notice that the performance of uh, participants 5, 7, uh, 5, 9, and 10 is uh, lower than the others. Because uh, this participant, they perform certain gestures differently in the two session, and so this indicates that our participants may need more practice uh, before they can perform this gesture constantly. And this is the confusion matrix of uh, the accuracy sh uh, sh of the gesture shown in, uh, in our experiment. We find it that the rub finger outperform all the other gestures as it. Uh, it's very distinct in the frequency to perform this gesture. Also, pinch and tap uh, were confused with each other most often because 
uh, the, the movement involved in these two fingers are really uh, relatively similar. So by introducing, also by introducing a rub finger for three times as an activation gesture, we achieved 0 0.38 false positive rate and a 5% uh, 5 false negative rate. So after the data collection session, we uh, several of the participants uh, give us some informal feedback of the gestures. So so some of the some of them indicate that uh, they prefer gestures of larger scale, like the squeezing instead of the pinch, because uh, this kind of gesture gave them um, a sense of control and and not much uh, effort to perform this gesture. And also, some pointed out that they would rather uh, have a relatively small, uh, small gesture set, as long as they are, there are some gestures that they are favorite and they function robustly. So, uh, in conclusion, we demonstrate that our system can detect five uh, finger gesture with an average F1 score of 87%. So besides uh, improving the classification accuracy and expanding the range of gesture we can recognize, we will discuss the ideas that, uh, so how, how we can expand our work for the uh, finger gesture recognition. So the first one would be going mobile. So in this work, we explore the feasibility of using the motion sensor to recognize gestures in three orientations. So we, it would be really interesting to know whether we can put this to mobile, so w whether we can also recognize them when the user is uh, in the move. And also we seek uh, several appealing applications. For example, uh, we see a large application area for our work in the mon monitoring health and well-being. In particular, we would like to explore whether our techniques could be used for uh, detecting finger and hand motions to detect some uh, diseases like Parkinson. And also, we would uh, believe our gesture would be used for in the cross-device uh, situation. For example, we can apply this gesture to improve interaction with our mobile phones or head-mounted devices. Uh, for example, if a phone call comes in, uh, we, would, we could simply decline this phone call by waving our fingers. And moreover, our, uh, we envision that our finger-based gesture interaction technique would work well to, uh, to cooperate with the head-mounted device like Google Glass and some maybe HoloLens even. And this provides a less obtrusive approach for interaction with this device in the public areas. Uh, okay, thank you for listening and I'm happy to take questions. Right, so, so what we use in this experiment is 50 hertz of sampling rate, which is uh, the rather stable. So actually you can get as fast as uh, 100 hertz or even 200, uh, so, so you, are, but you need to do uh, further processing on that data. So, but 50 hertz is the stable rate, sampling rate we can get. Okay, thank you.